all right everybody how's it going it is september 25th 2019 and i cannot believe it is already week four inside of the nfl this season is absolutely flying by because uh, i mean after this week we are already a quarter of the way through this season um there have been some surprises in uh, some surprises in the league some not so surprises and uh some weird injuries some like weird requests uh, melvin gordon's back with the chargers so i can't make a chargers joke i was gonna make earlier so that kind of sucks week three was the worst week i could have ever had it was i went nine and seven i've never gone worse than that um so hopefully week four is a week where all my fortunes come together and i get a lot of these games right a lot more safe picking this week i didn't go with a bunch of risky upsets so um again if there's any audio problems i apologize my microphone is broken i'm making the best with that i can i wasn't even going to make this video but but i love my fans i love all of you guys so much that um i had to do it i had to do it to them so here we are with our week four nfl pick em. i'm not going to be as in depth with all of them but i'm going to do my best to for the good games i'm going to give my uh my real two cents for some of the bad games they're just going to get clowned on let's go to the thursday night football or well the bye weeks first yes we are at that point in the season where teams are by and what a hilarious um set of teams 49ers who are having arguably one of the best starts in a very very long time since the Kaepernick era they have a bye week the Jets who desperately need a week off so maybe Sam Darnold can come back from his ninth grade kissing disease also known as mononucleosis I mean um, I, I think homecoming's over so he's good to go it's it's after homecoming it's been like a few weeks a few months since then he's over his mono you know his parents um he, he's good to go Sam's good, to, uh, Sam's good to go probably next week, so here are the bye weeks for week one. We'll list them as they go along. Let's hop into the Sunday or Thursday night football games. There's just one of them, and it's, a, it's an absolute doozy. This is going to be a very fun game to watch. Um, we have the Green Bay Packers hosting the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, the Eagles are 1-2, and two, and the Packers are 3-0. and oh, major, uh, uh, They're 3-0 they're oh, not because of their offense. But because of a very, very strong defense that I was underrating at the start of the season, they have so far against, um, you know, underwhelming offenses have over have overperformed to my wildest expectations. They look very, very good. Um, yeah, so far so good. But, uh, but they've only played like the fucking Bears, the Vikings who kind of stink at offense, if you're being a bit honest. Uh, Kirk Cousins is the Andy Dalton of the NFC. And um, uh, uh, they played the Broncos, who don't have an offense either. And then there's the Eagles, who just lost to the Lions, hilariously enough. They struggled to beat the Lions. It, it was an embarrassing game for them. They gave up an 101-yard kick return. They're starting to deal with injuries again. Aguilar can't hang on to the ball whatsoever. Um, and typically, uh, typically on Thursday Night Football, uh, the home team wins um especially just for whatever reason the eagles are kind of trending in the downward slope packers seem to be on a really really hot streak riding on that defense uh the line for this game is the packers are favored by to win by four four points and the over under is 46 i would go ahead and bet um i would go if i you know ats stuff i don't really know and i'm going to try this uh on this um, I would take the Packers um, with the over, or you know, with the with the. I would take the Packers, the points, and I best. I, and I'm thinking this game is going to be under. It's going to be under 46. So excuse me if I get some of the ATS stuff wrong. It's my first time. Sunday 1 p.m. games. Let's go ahead and get those started. Uh, we have a uh, game that I have no idea how to call because I don't know what either of these two teams are. Um, uh, Kyle Allen looked really good for the Panthers. Um, the Texans looked good as always, um, except for their offensive line and parts of their secondary, which are complete trash. Um, so basically I think, uh, Deshaun's far, a far better player than people give him credit for. He's, he actually does get a lot of credit for being a great quarterback. Uh, but, um, I just don't trust the Panthers on the road. Um, I feel like these two teams are actually very evenly matched. Uh, uh, like it, it's a very hard game to call. 
Um, uh, um, so with me, I kind of went with, I'm going to go with the home team on this one because it's hard to play in Houston. And uh, Carolina may have won their last game, but that's because uh, they played the Cardinals. And the Cardinals probably really didn't know how to game plan for a Kyle Allen. Whereas the Texans are a little bit better coached team. They're a little bit going to be a little bit more prepared. Um, there's film on Kyle Allen. So I kind of like the Texans taking this one. I also like the Texans getting those points. So I like the Texans to win by four. I think that's how that works. And I would definitely take the over on 46 and a half. I think this game is going to be very high scoring. At least 48 points. Um, and then we have the Cleveland Browns heading into Baltimore to play the Ravens. The Ravens are 2-1 and one after a heartbreaking loss in Arrowhead where Lamar Jackson just could not complete a pass. And the Browns are 1-2 and two after coming off, yeah, another heartbreaking loss where they should have ran the ball on four straight plays at like the four-yard line. They threw four times. Baker threw an interception. Um, like I've said before, the only problem with this team is not the talent. They're loaded with it. It's the coaching, the discipline, and just ran. He, he's a horrible play caller and coach. He should do one or the other. He needs to find somebody that will call the offense or something. Or else we're going to see more 4th and 9 HB draws. That was terrible. Let me get a drink of uh, water here because I'm running out of uh, air. Welcome to Dirty Sports Network. I'm Dirty Rob. Uh, Radio Gold. Alright, so yeah, I'm basically taking the Ravens in this game. Um, just because... I don't know, man. The Browns, when they won, they looked terrible, and when they've lost, they've looked even worse. So, I mean, I know they took it to win. Uh, they came very close to beating the Ravens, but uh, or the Rams. But Jared Goff had three turnovers. He was trying to let the Browns win on, in that game. So, give me the Ravens, uh, 24-13. I like them to cover that seven-point spread. So I like the Ravens with the points, and with an over/under, I would take the under. I don't think these two teams are going anywhere near 46 and a half. Let's jump to the next one. All right. This is um, a game I almost called for an upset, but I changed my mind at the last minute. Um, I don't know the health of Darius Slay, which worries me. I don't know the health of Mike Daniels. Um, I think this is going to be a shootout no matter what. I think this is a shootout because the Lions have... Uh, Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones, Danny Amendola, TJ Hawkinson, Jesse James, Carrion Johnson. Those guys can all catch the ball very, very well. And I don't think the uh, Chiefs have a secondary to keep up with that. They've got some very good pieces. But, man, that's a lot of receivers to cover. And and um, if if Darius Silly plays, uh, it could be a, it, this could be an upset. But I do think the Chiefs are a far more superior team. Mahomes is playing lights out. Um, I would not take the Chiefs plus six, uh, plus six and a half or whatever. I would take the Lions and the points, knowing that the Lions are probably only going to lose by a couple points based on how their defense is playing against teams like the Chargers and the Eagles. They've looked very good on defense against both of those two, two both of those two offensively based teams. So, uh, over under a 54, don't take that either because the Lions are going to make this a low scoring game. That's kind of the M.O. of Matt Patricia. Chiefs are going to win, though, probably. I I wanted to make this up my upset of the week. If I hadn't gone 9-7 last week, I would have made this the upset of my week. Hey, look at a battle of undefeated. It's 3-0 versus 2-0. How cool is that? And then we have another uh, battle of the undefeated. Um, I had no trouble picking this game, by the way. You guys thought, might have thought like, oh, Rob must have trouble. Uh, he must be afraid of the Bills. I'm not even thinking about this goddamn team. The Bills the Bills may be good right now, but they're 3-0, and but they're, they're running into their daddies. Uh, Daddy uh, Daddy, Belich, uh, Daddy Brady's ready to kiss his son, Buff. You know how uh, people like to joke that Tom Brady kisses his son on the lips? Well, the Buffalo Bills are Tom Brady's son's lips, and uh, they're getting ready for a big fat smooching. Uh, the Patriots are uh, the Patriots are being hosted by the Bills, so we have to go deal with all those Bills fans throwing dildos, um, dropping little babies through tables, blowing up expo- uh, f- explosives right next to their face. All sorts of crazy bullshit is going to go down. Um, uh, radio Gold. 
Radio Gold again. Sorry about that, guys. I know people always comment, why'd you burp? Because it's my fucking channel. If you don't like it, you can suck my hairy nuts. All right. The, uh, so the Patriots are hosted by the Bills. Uh, just based on history, just based on everything, just the Patriots look completely unstoppable this year. I mean, their defense uh, hasn't allowed a touchdown all year. They gave up a special teams touchdown and a touchdown on a pick six. Um, they haven't given up a Super Bowl. Uh, t- uh, they haven't given up a touchdown since the AFC Championship game in regulation. So just let that sink in. It's been um, an overtime quarter, the Super Bowl, and three games this year. No offensive touchdowns. The Bills have been winning a lot of games very close against bad defenses. So sorry, Buffalo, but you're probably going to lose this game. Um, but I, my, my prediction is 28 to 13, and I think the Patriots cover the seven point spread. And uh, I would say go with the under because 47 is too high. I don't think the Bills score that money. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the 1 BM games continued. There's four more. Uh, the Chargers got Melvin Gordon back, so this doesn't really change my prediction. Um, I was going to make a joke that the Chargers, the only thing that the Chargers are missing is a running back who is a combination of Josh Gordon and Melvin Ingram. If you could combine those two people and maybe even switch the names around, you might have a running back situation. I think they're going to fucking pay him. So welcome back, Melvin Gordon. You're my one of my favorite players. I'm glad this stupid ass team's either paying you or you just decided to end the holdout. Welcome back. I missed you in the NFL. So did so many fantasy owners who might have you. Um, I'm not going to talk much about this game. Uh, the Chargers um, are, are being hosted by the Dolphins. The Chargers are 2-1. The Dolphins are 0-3. I think the score is going to be 31-13. Um, I think the Chargers cover the 15-point spread, but I would bet the... I'd bet the over on this one, actually, because I think the Chargers are about to blow the fuck out of the Dolphins. So, I'd I'd take the Chargers plus plus 15 and the over. Um, This is another game that's not going to be very close. The Raiders are hot garbage. They fooled us all uh, all week one. They can't score any points. They have no pass rush. They really don't have a fucking secondary without uh, Jonathan Abrams. Uh, Derek Carr is trash, so I don't really know what to tell you. Uh, Jacoby Brissett's the real deal. I'm done betting against the Colts. Um, their their running game is for real. Everything about the Colts is for real. Their defense is for real. Uh, I, um, this is going to be a team that's going to fuck with people come playoff time. I like the Colts winning 24-13. to 13. Um, they're, The Colts will cover that spread, and uh, I would take the under with 45. And I believe there's two. One, uh, let's see. We have the Tennessee Titans uh, host. Uh, we have the Falcons hosting the Tennessee Titans in a matchup of the exact same two teams. Literally, I think these two teams are the exact same. Um, so the winner is going to be who's ever home, and the Falcons are home, so they're they're gonna win. Um, I would not bet this game at all. I would just do pick them on this one because this is they they're both so underwhelming. They both look good. They look really good one week and then they look like the worst team in the league the next. They're both one and two. Um, with the over under, I would probably go under just because both of these teams are just it's it, it, ugh. this might be worse than the Chargers and the Dolphins if we're being really honest. Um, I hate I hate the Atlanta Falcons. It they're ugh. Uh, they're the Tennessee Titans of the NFC North. And the final game is a game nobody actually gives a shit unless you're a Giants fan. Um, I'm actually kind of excited to see how Daniel Jan- uh, Daniel J- Jones done his- does in his first career start. He came in in, oh, in his second career start. He led the Giants to their f- uh, first win of the season. Um, set up a game, um, you know, he didn't set up a game winning field goal. A field goal got, uh, a field goal missed. Um, so how do you, you know, wins a win in the NFL, I guess, right? But it re-energizes the team. Um, the game's in, it's in New Jersey. So I think there's a bit of an advantage there. It's kind of like the, um, the, uh, the Colts or the Titans and the Falcons. I'm going with the home team here. Um, and the Redskins are just hot garbage. I was Case Keenum needs to re- be replaced by Dwayne ASAP. Um, just like the Giants did and, uh, no Saquon. I don't think it really matters. I like the Giants uh, winning this game. The over-under is way too high. 
And uh, I think I think the uh, I would take the Redskins with the points because uh, this could be a one point game. So these are the 1 p.m. games. Let's go ahead and move on to the four o'clock 4 p.m. games. There's five of them. We have the Los Angeles Rams taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in what is sure to be a blowout. Not much to analyze here. Sure, the Bucs have a great defense. They do not have an offense. And they don't have a kicker. They tried to lose it. They just lost to the Giants, which is hilarious. Not much to talk about there. Um, the Rams, they look good. They look good, as good as they did last year. Um, they turned the ball over quite a bit last week, but that's it. it's Jared Goff. What do you expect? Um, the Rams are favored by 10 points, um, so I would go ahead and take the Bucks in that one just because I don't think they'll win by 10. I think they'll win by like, uh, actually, yeah, go ahead and take the, take, take the 10 Rams with the 10, uh, over under a 49 and a half. Yeah, I would take that too, just because the Rams are going to beat the shit right out of these losers. So, uh, yeah, let's go on to the next game. The Seahawks and the Arizona Cardinals. Well, I was going to say the Seahawks were a guaranteed thing to win this game until they lost to uh, um, some loser team named the Saints without Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, the um, Seahawks are 2-1 and one and the Arizona Cardinals are 0-2-1. They couldn't be, uh, beat back up Kyle Allen. At, uh, it's just... I don't know, something, something ain't right with the Cardinals, the play calling, uh, the quarterback play. It's just something's weird. Uh, Seattle has Russell Wilson. They're very experienced. They know how to play in Arizona. The Cardinals don't scare them. I, I like the Seahawks uh, winning by, I don't like, I, I like the Cardinals to only lose by three. So I would take the Cardinals in the, you know, I would take the Cardinals with the like points or whatever. And uh, I, w I would bet the under, to be honest. This is going to be a weird low score. And then we have uh, what might be the game with no offense whatsoever. Neither of these teams are scoring 20. We have the Vikings, who are 2-1, and one, being hosted by the Bears. Um, the Bears are at home, which means their defense is going to play lights out, which means the Vikings aren't going to score much, much game, uh, many, many points. Uh, I think Kirk Cousins turns into Andy Dalton. Um... The Bears are two uh, two point five favorites, so I think they will go ahead and win by at least a field goal. So you should probably bet on the Bears with the points. Over under, I would take the under just because the Vikings' offense just is it, it's impotent from week to week. And the Bears, uh, the Bears are gonna the, the the this iteration of the Bears are the same thing as the two thousand Ravens. And once Mitch start, starts playing like a quarterback uh, of the, like that Ravens team. He'll be all right. Um, I like the Bears to win this one, 16-13. Um, I don't really give a fuck about this game. Nobody cares about these teams. Uh, Jaguars win 16-10. Broncos are 3.5-point favorites over under a 38.5 next game because really, who the fuck cares about uh, Gardner Minshew versus Joe Flacco? Nobody, ex unless you're fans of these two teams. I'm sorry, I'm not talking about this one. Let's go to Sunday Night Football. Two games left. We have... This is the game of the week, folks. I cannot fucking wait to watch this fucking game, dude. Oh, my freaking God. Um, I think Teddy Bridgewater... I should have made this my upset of the week, and I'm kicking myself in the ass for not doing it, but... God damn. All right. The Dallas Cowboys are heading down to the New Orleans uh, to New Orleans to play the Saints. The Cowboys are 3-0 and after a cupcake schedule, playing the Giants, Eagles, and... Uh, um, um, Redskins and the Saints just beat the Seahawks without Russell Wilson with Teddy water under the bridge Bridgewater nothing can decompose that guy the, uh, the Saints held that game all game long until the very end when the Saints score uh, the Seahawks scored garbage time touchdowns Teddy seems more than capable of carrying this offense um, the Cowboys are have been dominating but they have yet to play a real challenge so th this is going to be interesting. The Cowboys are two and a half point favorites. I would bet on the Saints in this one. You know, Saints to uh, take to two and a half. Uh, I would go with the Saints on that. Over under, I would say probably it's going to be over 47. Um, I could see a shootout happening, but I don't know how Bridgewater is going to do at that end. But I do think this is going to be low key one of the best games of the season until the Cowboys play the Patriots. My excitement can't be contained. Um, 
The Saints defense is going to neutralize Ezekiel Elliott. And that's going to be something fun to watch. And it's just it's just going to be a very, very fun affair to watch for everybody involved. Um, I'll, be, I'll be live reacting to this game, so I hope you tune in. We'll have a fun time. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I like the Cowboys 21-13, but would not be surprised to see the Saints pull this off with Teddy. Last but not least... Monday Night Football in a game of uh, this. Who gives a shit? I'm not not much to say. This the 0 and 3 Steelers are hosting the 0 and 3 Bengals. It's a battle of somebody's got to win, and I think the Steelers are a bit better than the Bengals. Rudolph's gonna pick up his first uh, his first win. Um, even though it would be quite hilarious if the if Dalton and the Bengals went into Baltimore Pittsburgh and won, which is probably what they're gonna do. Um, I actually predicted the over-under and said that the Steelers would win by four. So that's my pick. And the over-under is 43 and a half. Do not bet that. They're going to score maybe a combined like uh, 13 points somehow. So whatever. What a ter- There's some, like I said, there were some really duh games on there. Or some really, who gives a shit? So uh, yeah. What the hell did I? Oh, hold on. NFL pick'em record, uh, uh, week one, 12-3-1. I'm getting worse and worse as it goes along. So, uh, overall, last week I went 9-7. and seven. I'm 32-15-1 overall. All I can hope this week is that I did mucho, mucho better than I did uh, the week before. But uh, that's not always the case. Sometimes, you know, you struggle. You're not always going to be perfect. Uh, life will go on. And um, hopefully I go like 14-2 and two this week and you forget the bad week. Thank you guys so, so much for listening. We got to 22,000 views on that last one. I cannot believe it. We got 20,000 on the first one. Um, My goal for this one, uh, oops, 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 oops. My goal for this one is to hit, I don't know, want to be lofty? Let's go 10,000. 10,000 and 200 likes. And um, I will do something special for my subscribers. Uh, Let's get, if we get 3,000 subscribers, this uh, gets 10,000 views and 200 likes i will go ahead and do a uh ama where you guys can ask me anything and i will also do a color rush uh rank the color rush uh video and we'll do that on a live stream so i can't be um held unaccountable thank you guys so much for helping me grow the channel i really like it maybe one day i'll be able to do youtube as a full job uh maybe even sign up with barstool sports so if, if you're from barstool sports and you're listening Send me a job app. I'd love to apply. Um, Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Leave your picks down below. I'll make sure to get back to them as soon as I can after my live stream and all that. And, um, yeah, so uh, go Patriots. Go Lions. uh, Fuck the Packers. And uh, fuck uh, fuck the rest of the teams in the NFL that aren't the Patriots, Lions, 49ers. Uh, Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for listening, though. I really do mean it, even with all the shit I talk. You guys are my favorite people. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.